Hello and welcome to the second part of the second tutorial by the Lambda Rising team covering navigation. The next tool is the decals tool. It has both small and large textures that can be laid over existing textures, for example blood splats, bullet holes etc. So go over to your texture browser. Here you can find the filter. By typing in the word decal, the browser will now give you only those textures which carry the words decal in their file names. But for this example, we will use the blood splat. Double click on the texture and then go back to the object that you want to affect. You will now see that the mouse pointer has an explosion icon where the cursor should be. This means that you have now selected the decal tool. Now with the left mouse key, you can place the decal on the surface of your object, but remember that you cannot change the size of the decal using this tool. In the wireframe window, you can now place the decals over the whole area of the object that you have selected. But it is not impossible to change the size of the decals. Use the overlay tool and click again on the map so that we have a second blood splat on the block. Use the selection tool to acquire and resize the decal. You can now make it as small or as large as you want. Now we come to one of the most important tools, the entity tool. With this tool you can place NPCs, weapons, lighting and other useful objects into your map. Click on the entity tool and with the left mouse key click on the block in your map. You should get a little green man. This is the default entity known as Info Player Start. This is where your character will spawn. While the Entity tool is selected, on the right drop down menu you can now find other items and useful entities to add to your map. But for now we will leave this tool on Info Player Start. In the 3D window you can double click on the entity and you will get a new window open up. Here we can change lots of options or choose another entity like light. Also you can for example move the selected entity around the map at will. Now back to the camera tool which we couldn't really explain before. As you can see the camera is represented by a small light blue ball. That can be positioned in all three wireframe views. But this can be over complicated. So we suggest you go to the 3D view and holding down the left mouse key you can change the direction of the camera. Holding both the left and the right key while moving your mouse forwards and backwards the camera will do the same. So now we have explained the main tools we now come to the last two tools the clipping tool and the vertex tool. But first the clipping tool. This will allow you to cut pieces out of the block or cut a larger block into two halves without changing the size of the parent block. So now we have two more possibilities. When you use the selection tool to select one of the blocks and then click on the clipping tool, you will see that nothing happens. Using the wireframe side view to put a line down the middle of the block, you will see that one side of the block will turn white and the other side red. This will mean that if you now press enter the red side will be deleted leaving the white side. While holding the shift key plus the X key you can switch the sides over so that the other side becomes red or make both sides white. If while the block on both sides remains white and you press the enter key this will cut the block in two that you can now place independently. You can use this tool to cut the corners off your block, but first you need to put in a line at the angle of your choice. And make sure that the corner is red. If it isn't, then use the Shift and X key to change it to red, or you could wind up deleting the wrong side. When the side is red, press Enter and the corner will disappear, but it helps if you experiment with this function, practice makes perfect. This is the same for the vertex tool, apart from you will now have one side white, the other yellow. The yellow part is the part that you can change the height and the width of. With the white part in the wireframe side view, you can click on the top left corner of the block and drag it downward, 
to create a wedge shape. Then press enter and the block will change to this shape. Also with this tool you will need to experiment, but if something goes wrong, click on edit then undo to put everything back to the way it was. For more information and tutorials visit our website at www.lambdarising.com and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.